similar to the tomb of Tutankhamen. The tomb, they were a war. Much of the discussion has been about the skull. The mysteries of ancient Egypt continue to unfold. Recent studies on King Tut's DNA have unveiled compelling secrets, shedding light on ancient Egyptian enigmas. Despite numerous artifacts, only a fraction of the civilization's secrets have been unearthed, adding to the allure of this ancient culture. Join us as we uncover these secrets and how this one discovery has paved the path to finding out so much more about civilization that would otherwise have been lost to time. Howard Carter in the 1920s, Dr. Howard Carter, driven by an intense fascination with ancient Egypt, set his sights on unraveling the mysteries concealed within Luxor's mystical Valley of the Kings. Gaining access to the sacred site was akin to deciphering the code to a coveted treasure vault, yet Carter remained resolute. Despite previous archaeological discoveries in the valley, which had been explored by only a select few, Carter believed that untouched tombs still laid hidden in its ancient embrace including the elusive resting place of King Tutankhamun. The valley's rights were held by Theodore Davis, an American lawyer, until an unexpected turn in 1914, when he declared the valley exhausted. Many experts agreed, deeming it thoroughly explored and devoid of future discoveries. However, Carter, undeterred and convinced that King Tut's tomb remained concealed, began an ambitious expedition into the Valley of the Kings. Leading a team of local laborers, Carter's expedition involved years of tireless efforts in shifting earth and stone. Initial results were minimal, but a significant discovery came when they found old workmen's huts near Ramsey's sixth tomb, dating from a period later than King Tut's era and oddly placed. These huts became a focal point in the quest for the hidden tomb. Carter's unwavering determination and meticulous approach set the stage for one of the most remarkable archaeological discoveries in history eventually leading to the unveiling of King Tutankhamun's tomb and his treasures. Could they lead to Tutankhamun's long-lost tomb? Tut's Tomb In a final effort during the last season, Howard Carter resolved to uncover King Tutankhamun's tomb, aware that it was now or never, their last chance to make history or abandon the dream forever. On November 4, 1922, while excavating beneath one of the enigmatic huts, Carter's team struck a solid step in the rock. Further digging revealed an entire staircase, leading to a sealed door marked with the official seal of the royal necropolis from the 18th dynasty. This was an extraordinary find, but the real revelation awaited. Breaching the door on November 5th, Carter discovered a passage filled with debris, capturing the thrilling moment in his journal. The archaeologist found himself on the brink of a magnificent discovery, an untouched tomb that many believe would never be found. By the 26th, Persistent efforts revealed the low section of the door, bearing the unmistakable cartouche of Tutankhamun. Behind it lay another sealed door. As the passageway was cleared, a flickering candle cast dim light, heightening the suspense of the impending revelation. Treasures In the faint glow available, Howard Carter could sense the splendor lurking within the tomb. What lay before him surpassed his descriptions, a trove of wonders, an understatement for the treasures that had endured centuries of obscurity. As the tomb unveiled its secrets, a golden throne and ebony statue stood regally. Intricately adorned caskets hinted at the riches within, creating a gallery of extravagance. Finely crafted chairs, bronze musical instruments, resplendent chariots, and garments shimmering with gold sequins adorned the space. Priceless ornaments and a myriad of artifacts filled the chamber, each more valuable than the last. At the heart of it all stood the piece de resistance, the striking pink quartzite sarcophagus, encircled by intricately carved reliefs of majestic winged goddesses. The unveiling of this sarcophagus marked the apex of the entire discovery. Using a carefully devised pulley system, Carter hoisted the colossal 2,500-pound stone lid in front of an assembled gathering of officials and onlookers. Behold, King Tutankhamun lay within a seven-foot-long figure crafted from wood adorned with an illustrious sheen of shimmering gold. This was just the beginning. Nestled within were two more intricately adorned coffins, each nestled within the other. The third and final coffin, an astounding creation fashioned entirely from solid gold, emerged, a sight that left spectators breathless. Within this gold vessel was a figure with hands clasped around a scepter, also crafted from gold. 
the regal forehead bore the twin heads of a cobra and a vulture, symbolizing the immortal sovereignty of the king. This was proof that everything Carter had been working towards was not in vain. The Mystery The mysterious circumstances surrounding King Tutankhamun's death, despite his youthful age, pose a significant historical question. Upon examining his remains, researchers uncovered clues suggesting potential health challenges, including evidence of a leg fracture that had turned septic, raising concerns about a life-threatening situation contributing to his demise. Traces of the malaria parasite in King Tut's bloodstream further fuel suspicions of severe complications from this disease, with scholars speculating that its effects might have significantly weakened him. While this might be the oldest case of malaria, it may not have been the sole cause of his death. The mysteries persist as x-ray analysis of King Tut's skull reveal a notable fracture at the back, sparking debates among the experts about his possible role in his untimely demise. The enigma surrounding King Tutankhamun's death continues to captivate scholars and historians, unraveling the complexities of ancient health challenges and contributing to the ongoing exploration of his historical significance. Was this injury fatal or did it exacerbate existing health complications? Sinister Theories Amidst these medical theories, there are fringe hypotheses that propose more sinister possibilities. The notion that King Tutankhamun might have been intentionally poisoned or murdered. These theories speculate on scenarios where his injuries coupled with malaria might have pushed him to unbearable suffering leading to a decision to end his life. Either way, his death was far from natural, but now DNA analysis has revealed even more. His life might not have been so easy. Either the study was to look into the genetic makeup of ancient Egyptians. Royal mummies offer intriguing insights into Tutankhamun's health and lineage, answering long-standing mysteries surrounding his life and death. Contrary to previous assumptions that the king was a powerful ruler who just happened to die early, the findings portray King Tut as a frail and physically challenged ruler who had a bone disorder. These health issues likely rendered him unfit for more physically demanding activities, dispelling romanticized notions of him riding chariots. Describing Tutankhamun's physical condition, study team member Karsten Push, a geneticist from Germany's University of Tübingen, said that he had a possible club foot and was dependent on a cane for mobility, and all of this wasn't by surprise. Physical Condition It was also found that his parents were likely to be siblings. When individuals who share a significant portion of their genetic makeup have offspring, it can lead to an increased risk of certain genetic issues due to a lack of genetic diversity, and he might have been a product of generations of inbred. Reading in a population genetic diversity is crucial for the overall health and adaptability of offspring. When closely related individuals mate, they share more genetic material reducing the diversity in their offspring's genetic makeup. This reduced genetic diversity can make individuals more susceptible to various health issues. Inbreeding increases the likelihood of inherited disorders or genetic anomalies. Certain harmful recessive genes that were previously masked can become expressed when inherited from both parents who share common ancestors. This can lead to a higher chance of health complications or developmental issues in offspring. It can also compromise the effectiveness of the immune system. A diverse genetic pool often provides a broader range of immune responses, but inbreeding may limit these responses, so the children born may be more susceptible to disease and infections. Inbreeding elevates the risk of physical and developmental abnormalities in offspring. These malformations can manifest in various ways, affecting physical appearance or internal organ development. So the weak bones, club foot, and the fact that his body was unable to fight off the malaria are all signs that he was just born with a short lifespan. But seeing that he was also killed with a blow to the head means that there's a part of the story that we might never really find out more about. What do you think? Could he have been a weak teenager who just happened to die because of the way he was born? Or was he killed because he was on the throne and someone wanted to replace him? That's all for today. Make sure to like, subscribe, and press the bell icon for all future updates. See you next time.